France have gone back to basics. They lost their identity throughout this championship. But today against Wales, they just battered and battered and battered. They were big and brutal and direct. And they just played on that over and over. Hello, amateurs. Welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I'm going to be with you for the rest of the championship and beyond. So hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. And I'm today going to be looking at the France team that I think will be picked to face England to see if they can back up the win against Wales this weekend. Whereas I said, they have gone back to absolute basics, playing rap pattern, just going the same way, same way, same way, exhausting that channel, coming back the other way, other way, other way, keeping things so simple so everybody knows what page they're on, relying on their enormous humans to get them over the game line, gain momentum, and then just taking overlaps when they're there. Elko and myself went into this game, the uh, Wales-France game, in great detail where they eventually overwhelmed the young Welsh team. I'll link it up there for you. Go and check that one out if you have not seen it already. I'll give you some idea of where France are heading into this weekend's game. Important factor, just a six-day turnaround for France. And after a game like that where, you know, they've really gone physical, that could be a factor in some of the selections. Could be a factor in their energy how well they're, recover, they're able to recover, how much training they're going to get done this week. So in terms of tactics, I don't expect them to change at all. I expect them to come out and try and batter England like they battered Wales today. OK, one squad update this evening. And France have selected into their squad Antoine Frisch, the centre who plays for Munster and is Irish qualified. Uh, some people are saying that he's been kind of nicked or you know stolen from under Irish eyes I don't know I don't really understand the situation there but um he's in anyway he's in the squad whether he'll get selected this weekend is a whole different matter okay let's look at who I think will get selected so we will start with the forwards and these guys as far as I'm concerned showed up this weekend they were big they were physical they were direct they're everything you wanted a French pack of forwards to be I mean, they're probably, defence-wise, they didn't move around too much and left a little bit of space to be exploited. But again, they're big and heavy and they, they're picked for one reason, and that is to go forward. And they did that. They were dominant at scrum time. They really caused Wales some pain. So all of these guys, I think now, are the best available in their positions. Um, and I think that might be the first time we've genuinely been able to say that about France and their forwards this championship. Uh, they've always had a few people out. OK, onwards to the backs. Le Garrick started this last week and was super lively. One player of the match, some ridiculous French flair at times. And uh, yeah, just got France moving forward. It was kind of what we said that we thought they needed. Some spark, just that little bit of something just to get them on the front foot. And Le Garrick definitely Coaxed that out of these big French forwards. Ramos, I, I mean, he was he had some really good moments. He was physical when he had the ball, but went missing on defence so many times. He just looked like he wasn't all that interested. Uh, but he keeps his spot in the side because he's still the most experienced player that France have got in that position. Across the rest of the backs, Bill Beery looked dangerous whenever he got the ball. Penno was an absolute menace. He got the ball a lot more in this game. He got it in midfield and skittled over a few Welsh centres and stuff like that. And um, he was great. Leo Barry was, uh, he had moments on attack, but he got misplaced on defence a few times, particularly for the dire try. But again, a young player, I think you've got to back these guys and let them have, a, have another shot. Vicar was decent. 12, De Porter. I don't know. So here's the question mark for me. I thought he looked lively on attack without really breaking free but I think on defence alongside Ramos it looked very flaky for France and I think he made a couple of good tackles but together as a pair they did not look convincing for me so I wonder whether France might want to go with a more experienced player in that position uh, in Moafana potentially a better defender because you know that England are going to be challenging France you know that England are going to be trying to move the ball and play this slightly more expansive style, quick attacking rugby that we saw against Ireland this last weekend. I think they will. I think they'll pick Moafana 
the Porter did not have a bad debut by any means, but I just think this might be the right choice for this game this weekend uh, against England. Onto the bench. And this was where the game changed, in truth. The game this weekend, just gone against Wales, was when this monstrous set of forwards came off the bench and then just continued to pound away at Wales. If anything, getting more direct than they had been up until that point in the game. More control, just more power, and eventually Wales just succumbed. Uh, Luku did a good job off the bench and Deportea will join him there. What do I want from this France team as a neutral? What would they want for themselves going into this game? For them, I think it's all about control and possession. If they can control possession, then they can dominate the physicality. They can put England under a lot of pain and wear them down. Elko said in the review video, it's like a heavyweight boxer boxing against, you know, somebody slightly lighter and he's just leaning on him, just draining him of energy for the entire 80 minutes. And that's what this France team is picked to do. As soon as these forwards get on top and stay on top, if they can stay on top, if they can control that possession, then they'll lean, they'll drain you of energy and eventually space will appear for the likes of uh, Ramos uh, to, to take advantage uh, with their really rapid backs. Okay, that's what I think. That's what I think the French team will be to take on England down in Lyon this weekend, continuing their road trip around France. I'm not sure when the last time France played in Lyon, but it's not a traditional road trip for them. You know, they're usually in Marseille uh, if they're not in Paris. So I'll be interested to find that. If you know, let me know in the comments down below. And also, if there's any squad changes that happen that I wasn't aware of. Let me know about those as well. Do you think this is the right team? Do you think Antoine Frisch might come into the squad for a debut? Uh, who knows? But let me know in the comments down below and I will join you there for a conversation and we can discuss all things rugby. Give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind while you're down there and you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next and don't forget to get out and play.